Welcome to the next in the series of Natera webinars, CT DNA assay for remote monitoring, risk stratification for CRC patients. Our speaker today is Abigail Smith, oncology nurse at Penn Medicine. She will lead today's presentation and take your questions at the end. We will also bring in Shifra from Natera for the questions and answers session. Without further ado, go ahead, Abby. Thank you so much for the introduction, and I'm so happy to be here tonight, and thank you for joining us as we discuss uh, Natera and Signatera residual disease test. The topics that we will be um, discussing as I advance here next are uh, Signatera residual uh, disease test overview, two clinical case studies with Signatera, new Signatera GI expanded access program, as well as Signatera remote ordering solutions. So to begin, here is a Natera overview. This is uh, the leadership in cell-free DNA since 2004, and there have been over 2 million uh, clinical CFDNA tests performed with over 80 CFDNA patents issued or allowed. And this is a public company with over $302 million in revenue. So as we can see, this is an established company throughout the world with proven technology that initially started in the reproductive health field and has now moved to oncology as well as organ transplant. Signatera is focused on residual uh, disease detection and applications in cancer monitoring. And so we can see there is a continuum for the uses of ctDNA testing. And in the middle falls Signatera um, that does assess for residual disease. Um, and we can see that there's a molecular residual disease status that it assesses for, as well as um, assesses for surveillance uh, for early recurrence monitoring, as well as treatment response uh, monitoring. So if a patient, um, if adjuvant therapy is needed for a patient, or it can also show us if a therapy is working. And so we're going to discuss this further throughout the presentation. So what is Signatera residual disease test? Well, this is a personalized and tumor-informed approach. In simple terms, we take tumor tissue and look for mutations. So how this is done, uh, this tumor tissue is sequenced to identify unique uh, signature of tumor mutations and a gene panel is set. From there, we are able to uh, custom design and manufacture a personalized uh, PCR assay for each patient that targets the top 16 clonal mutations found in tumor. And then we're able to use that personalized assay to test patients' blood for presence of circulating tumor DNA. Now, these mutations are found in every cell, and we look at these clonal or truncal uh, mutations to personalize each sample and making it very accurate for each individual patient. Signatera can detect as few as one genomic equivalent in 10 mLs of plasma. So there are about 10 mLs of plasma in two tubes of blood. And what this diagram is really showing us that at the smallest level, um, we can still test for DNA. So we can see there with that green um, circle that 0.01% um, VAF um, or variant allele frequency, there's approximately one tumor genomic equi equivalent, which is the signatory detection uh, limit. So it is a highly sensitive test. And um, with this technology, we are able to um, pick up DNA at a very small level. And this has also been validated in clinical studies um, across multiple solid tumors. So tonight we're talking about um, colorectal cancer. However, um, this has also been studied in breast cancer patients, lung, as well as bladder. And if a patient has a positive Signatera result, without further treatment, there is a predictive relapse with over, overall PPV of greater than 98%, and that PPV stands for positive predictive value. So um, 
basically, if ctDNA is negative, it stays negative. And if it is positive, well, then that patient uh, needs to be treated. Now, looking more closely at the colorectal study, um, was the JAM, was published in JAMA Oncology, and there were 125 patients, uh, patient stages one through three with colorectal cancer, treated with curative surgery and optional adjuvant chemotherapy. There were nine, 795 plasma samples were collected, and they were collected pre-surgery, day 30, and quarterly up to three years. So as we can see, this is not a one-time test. This is serial testing um, that was studied over a three-year span of time. And because of this study in 2019 and other studies, uh, Signatera was awarded breakthrough device designation and positive CMS draft coverage. So um, because it is an FDEA um, breakthrough device, it, is, it helps clear regu regulatory pathway to support biopharma studies. And this coverage was granted because it was highly and heavily validated. And this Signatera draft coverage by Medicare was for stages two to three uh, colorectal cancer. Now, the Medicare proposed coverage for a stage two to three colorectal uh, cancer was in two different settings, in the adjuvant program, which means post-surgery, uh, and then also in the surveillance program, which means um, for our curative intent patients. So in the adjuvant program, Signatera um, was used after surgery to evaluate the need for adjuvant chemotherapy and avoid unnecessary treatment for stages two to three colon cancer and stage 2A rectal cancer. Now, in our surveillance program, Signatera, um, alongside uh, with CEA, was used to detect recurrence earlier. Well, um, it may still be, the cancer may still be resectable and reduce false positives, and that was for our stage two to three colorectal patients. Now, the Medicare proposed coverage for stage two to three uh, colorectal cancer patients um, was um, proposed here below in this diagram. So we can see that the adjuvant program consists of six months after surgery, and the initial test is drawn about three weeks um, after surgery, and then the uh, Signatera is serially used after surgery to evaluate the need for adjuvant chemotherapy or to avoid unnecessary treatment. So what that means, there's four um, blood drawings that are done in the adjuvant setting. So the initial one done that helps build that panel is done at three weeks, and then subsequent draws are at six weeks, roughly three months. Um, five months, and then again at six months. Now, Signatera status is the only significant predictor of outcome. And if a patient has a positive Signatera result, well, it has a 17% increased risk for recurrence in the absence of additional treatment. So this diagram is showing us that the accuracy is very predictive. And at the bottom there, the hazard ratio is pretty much saying how many times more likely, if the result is positive, will that patient recur? Well, what we can see on that longitudinal um, bar graph at the very top, that if a patient was not treated, then they will recur. And that was um, studied over three years worth of data. And Signatera has been validated with high PPD, or positive predictive value, uh, and NPV, or negative predictive value. So with these two diagrams, we see the relapse rate after a Signatera result. So simply put, if a result is positive, uh, then the, the patient will have a 97% chance of recurring if they do not receive additional adjuvant treatment. Now, if the result is negative, the patient on that first draw, that single test draw, a patient has a 12% chance of recurring. With serial testing, and if that patient, um, the signatory testing remains negative, then there is only a 3% chance of recurrence. 
So again, the adjuvant program is designed to assess for um, evaluate the need for adjuvant chemotherapy and avoid unnecessary treatment post-surgery, whereas the surveillance program is really designed to use Signatera along with CEAs to detect recurrence earlier so that a tumor may be resected or to avoid false positives. And we're going to delve in a little bit more closely and look at a case study next. And so with the case study, we're going to actually look at our first case study. It's going to be with a stage 2 patient eligible for chemotherapy in the adjuvant setting. Now this patient uh, has a history of rectal cancer. And it's a 69-year-old female with a T4N2 rectal adenocarcinoma diagnosed back in November 2019. The patient in, uh, started with induction chemo of Folfox in December, and the plan was for TNT, or total neoadjuvant treatment. The physician was interested in assessing the treatment response, so Signatera was ordered uh, to assess that, that treatment response. And furthermore, the next um, slide shows us uh, what a Signatera report looks like. So Signatera showed a 90% ctDNA decrease after three cycles. So um, while there was certainly positivity, so we see the Signatera positive, um, but we can see that, that um, the, uh, the circulating tumor cell DNA dropped uh, significantly. So given the ongoing COVID-19 outbreak, the patient was strongly interested in non-surgical approaches. So Signatera was ordered to continue to monitor um, and assess for that residual tumor. And so what did we find? So Signatera showed MRD negativity. So we can see how that um, on the graph there that it continued to show that um, and eventually showed no circulating tumor cells. And TNT was continued with the goal of managing the patient non-surgically and the plan was to continue MR MRD monitoring with Signatera certainly in, in light of COVID. Um, this was certainly very reasonable. So as we can see from with that one case study, it really changed the course of that patient's potential treatment based on those Signatera results where a patient may have opted for a potential surgery, but in light of the negative results of Signatera, it was certainly um, reasonable to withhold surgery at this time and especially given um, in the midst of a pandemic. So actionable results for adjuvant uh, decision-making are summarized here in this table. So if a patient displays um, positive ctDNA, they are considered high risk, and greater than 97% uh, of patients will relapse without treatment. In our stage 2 colon and stage 2a rectal cancer patients, we would manage these patients as high risk. And with our stage 3 colon cancer patients, we would also manage these patients as high risk. Um, with our ctDNA uh, negative patients, they are certainly considered more at a reduced risk. So they have less than 12% um, chance that they will relapse. So in managing our stage 2 colon and our stage 2a rectals, we would um, manage them similarly to a stage one um, cancer patient and consider repeat testing and observation. And with our stage three colons, we can also consider repeat uh, testing and de-escalation. So Medicare uh, proposed coverage for stage two to three um, CRC. And this um, timeline shows um, kind of the recommendations of the blood draws in our surveillance programs greater than six months after surgery. So it's recommended that Signatera to be used alongside CEA checks to detect recurrence earlier while it may still be resectable and to avoid those false positive results as we often see with um, CEA draws. And this is just a recommendation of when to do those lab draws, but certainly it's up to the provider of when uh, one deems appropriate for those lab draws to be done. So while these two graphs shows a lot going on, however, ctDNA status after adjuvant therapy predicts clinical relapse with, a nine, with about a nine-month 
um, average lead time. So what this means is that ctDNA recurrence is found earlier than using CEA alone or CT imaging. And so that's really what to summarize is that certainly um, CEA can show false positives at times. So Signatera is able to find that recurrence earlier and um, it, it, in the nine months earlier, which is quite significant. And even if a CT imaging is showing um, no evidence of disease and we see our Signatera result is positive, well, this may warrant um, uh, for additional imaging with such as a MRI or with a PET CT. Now, Signatera is more accurate than CEA with false, um, with fewer false positives. And so, what these two graphs show is that uh, Signatera is both highly sensitive and predictive. Therefore, it is more accurate. So we can see with the two bar graphs where Signatera is certainly more sensitive um, when compared to the CEA in the green, and certainly more specific as well when also compared to CEA, and it limits those false positive results. Now, going on to the surveillance program. So the surveillance program um, can certainly be useful when we're following these patients, checking our CEAs, and um, we see these indeterminate lung or liver nodules, or if we also see a rising CEA with no finding on a CT. And this case study that we will talk about next um, sheds light on when, we, when uh, a surveillance program signatory use will be helpful. So this is the colon cancer case study. And we're working up a questionable nodule here. So a 64-year-old patient presents with a T3N1 left-sided colon cancer um, and MSI stable. In 2018, patient with status post three months of Zlox. On follow-up imaging in August of 2019, there was an enlarging pulmonary nodule noted on the chest CT. In September, uh, a, a CT-guided biopsy was attempted, but the biopsy showed no evidence of malignancy, and the patient was really hesitant about having another repeat biopsy. So the provider ordered Signatera to guide further workup of this pulmonary nodule. And the Signatera result popped back positive for CTDNA. So this really um, encouraged the provider and encouraged the patient that we need to certainly track down where this um, tumor is coming from, and, and a repeat bi a biopsy was certainly warranted. And it did find uh, morphological and immunophenotypic features consistent with metastatic colorectal adenocarcinoma. So the patient did undergo surgery, had that uh, mass removed, and came back in March, right around when the pandemic was um, breaking out. And it was discussed whether or not to do this mop-up adjuvant chemotherapy. However, certainly the patient and provider both concerned given immunosuppression with chemotherapy in the midst of the COVID outbreak. So Signatera was, again, ordered to help guide whether it was reasonable to continue with systemic therapy or if it was certainly possible just to hold off. And repeat Signatera, fortunately, came back negative um, for CTDNA. So after discussing pros and cons and whether uh, additional therapy was warranted, it was decided to just watch and wait. So um, serial Signatera was um, continued to be ordered along with repeat imaging. And fortunately, in light of um, the pandemic and, and even not during pandemic times, uh, there is a mobile phlebotomy um, that is able to be used. So for this patient, a mobile phlebotomist came out to the home uh, and Signatera was repeated again in one month and continued to show uh, negativity, which was great. So actionable results in the surveillance setting. Medicare proposed uh, coverage for serial testing with the same frequency as CEA. So when a patient's having, it's an easy way to remember when a patient is having a CEA drawn, certainly that's a time when uh, Signatera testing can also be drawn as well. And looking at the test interpretation, so if the CTDNA is positive, certainly that patient would be considered high risk, knowing that that risk of relapse is 97% of patients who don't receive additional therapy. And 
at that time, it may very well be warranted for um, additional imaging to be ordered, such as a PET or MRI, especially if the CT DNA is positive and a CT imaging is negative. If a CT DNA is negative, um, then that patient is certainly considered to be reduced risk, and 12 to 14 percent of patients may relapse. Um, however, patients who remain negative two years post-treatment have a risk reduced to 3 percent. So it's certainly just recommended to continue to monitor with, with reassurance. Testing logistics and frequency in our stage uh, 2 to 3 CRC patients. So in the adjuvant program, um, this is again considered the first six months after surgery. The initial test takes the longest, and that's because we're, we're building that platform. Um, and the initial test takes three to four weeks for the results to pop back. Um, but subsequent tests um, really only take about a week. And the recommended testing schedule, which again is um, certainly can be changed by the provider, is at one month, two months, four months, and then month six. But that certainly can be changed. And then in our surveillance program, and this is considered greater than six months after surgery. Um, again, that initial test will take three to four weeks to pop back, but then the subsequent test, the um, turnaround time is about a week. And uh, it's recommended to have that Signatera testing done at the same frequency as CEA. CEA. So roughly every three months um, up into the two-year mark, and then every six months uh, from years two to five. And here is a sample report. And what I love about these reports is how easy it is to interpret and really to know right off the bat what is positive and what is negative. It appears in bright bold letters right at the top there. You see there are a plus or minus sign. So simple, super easy to interpret. Um, and really what it's telling us is there is CTDNA present or is it absent? And certainly over time, we can see um, whether um, the patient is trending positively or negatively. So um, it really has that nice um, time slope as well. So remote uh, monitoring with Signatera is, again, um, only available in the U.S. And as I discussed just briefly, this is um, Signatera's remote testing capability. So what happens is an, a physician will initially um, place the order for a Signatera testing and receive the test results through Natera's online portal. So once the patient places the results, basically we punt the ball over to Signatera and they do all the work. So the patient will receive a welcome phone call. The, um, they will schedule to have the blood drawn at the patient's home. A phlebotomist comes to the home takes the um, blood supply, ships it, and then the results are reported through the portal. So it's a simple, easy task of really just the provider ordering the testing and then the tariff takes care of the rest. So this provider portal is very easy to navigate and it makes ordering quite simple. So certain features um, do include, it, it's able to upload patient in, um, information directly onto the portal. Um, you would just choose Natera if you prefer to manage the patient um, blood draws rather than your office or the provider managing when these blood draws are to occur. It's free access um, to the mobile phlebotomy services, so there's no additional charge for having the mobile phlebotomist draw the labs rather than the patient coming to your um, clinic or office, especially at this time where we really, I know, are trying to limit those patient um, visits and really doing a lot of uh, telemedicine. And enables um, easy scheduling of future um, draw dates, and it also has reminders as well. So it really allows the, um, the testing to be tracked easily, um, and the results are all right there on the portal. So here's just um, a sample of what really the portal looks like. Um, so as we can see, um, the provider portal can create and manage these Signatera orders. So you can re uh, review the results on the left there, and um, you can easily access the latest results. And then on the right side there, you can create an order. You can create single um, or recurring orders. Um, and when a new order is created, 
um, it will automatically pre-populate there. And then um, also what's important too, you can also track the order. So you can see where in the process, if you're, you're eager to have that result or that patient um, is coming back in that following week, you can really see um, where the progress is of that order you submitted. Now, what's also so great about this program is that there's a great customer um, care team. So Natera's patient care team is available to support patients throughout the whole testing experience. So with that initial requisition, uh, requisition form, the test order is received, and then immediately the patient receives a welcome phone call. So this welcome phone call um, topics include Signatera um, test process, expected number of blood tests, uh, the mobile phlebotomy appointment, the blood collection kit delivery, the test uh, turnaround time, and the compassionate care program. And I think this is so important as a nurse to really know um, when to, uh, or what we can tell our patients who may be calling, what is this the terror testing all about, and so you can be equipped to really have some information of what to tell your patients. And so Natera's care team really is proactive in reaching out to the patient as soon as that test is ordered, and they're very um, available and helpful uh, to answer any questions. And Natera offers um, an extensive coverage of remote uh, blood draw locations. So certainly um, there's lots of different um, mobile phlebotomy uh, sites there's approximately 10,000 in the in the U.S. here, and and about uh, 1,200 patient service centers across the U.S. So, um, you know, most states, um, this is widely available to patients, um, which is quite helpful. And that concludes our presentation. So. Um, here is the contact information, uh, the telephone number, and certainly you can um, follow Natera on Twitter or LinkedIn. And um, we are going to go to some uh, questions. So feel free to enter any questions you may have, um, and um, we'll go from there. So it looks... Yeah, I'll go right thank you very much, Abby. Uh, yeah. yeah, we do have some questions. So... Again, if you uh, did ask your question, we're digging through them now. If you would like to ask a question, please do so. Again, just type into the uh, interface there. So first question, um, and we'll also bring in uh, Shifra from Natera as well, I believe. She'll be, uh, she'll be joining here momentarily. Great. Um, I am there in present. All right. Um, first question, are the BAF cutoffs different? Hold on. Are the VAF uh, cutoffs different for the adjunct uh, and surveillance programs? Yes, thank you for, so much for that question. So a positive result uh, depends on the number of variants we are detecting. So as Abigail had um, introduced earlier, we are tracking 16 variants. If we are seeing two or more, that is a positive result. What is important is the ability to detect down to a 0.01% variant total frequency. And the reason why that's important is based from our clinical validation work across various solid tumor tissue types, we notice that the very first uh, DTDNA signal, uh, when it is detected, um, it is detected at a real frequency of 0.01% to 0.1%. So if that's the earliest signal that we are detecting in over 53% of our patients um, where we are tracking, it's important to be able to have a sensitive test to go down to that small variantillion frequency, which would correspond to a very low disease burden. So the VAS don't change. What, what is important is that the ability to see uh, or de detect ctDNA at that low amount um, and to be able to reliably uh, track those variants over time. All right. Thank you very much. Next question is, what is the turnaround time for your initial test, including whole exome sequencing? Sure. So the creation of the platform, which includes whole exome sequencing on the tissue sample as well as whole exome sequencing on the normal match, uh, the creation of the assay takes about two to three weeks. 
once it is created, um, every subsequent plasma analysis on the cell-free DNA will take about one week to a long time. Okay, next question. Do you report actionable mutations in your test results? Yes, yeah, so currently we do not. Uh, right now, the variants that we are selecting to track are clonal variants, which tend to be passenger or neutral variants. We are specifically designed uh, to track this quality or this type of variants because these changes will uh, persist throughout the evolution of the cancer's evolution in every subclone that would emerge. And also, they will not disappear under the selective pressures of therapy. They tend to be actually quite neutral or what we know as passenger mutations. Um, so certainly, there are other ctDNA assays that are designed for more advanced disease where you would want to identify actionable mutations. But this assay is designed for early stage disease for the purpose of molecular residual disease uh, detection and monitoring over time for identification of early relapse. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, next question. Do VA hospitals use this test? Uh, we are currently engaged with VA uh, with, a, with our bespoke uh, CRC study. Um, so there are a couple of clinics there that are, that are joining us under, under the utilization of, of Sigintera for with regards to the umbrella of the study. So they, there are some that are, they are aware and there are some that are utilizing under the auspices of the study. Okay, thank you. Next question. Um, attendee says, I learned that ctDNA is more accurate than CEA. Does smoking or PPI use affect Signatera like it can with CEA? So ctDNA, um, Signatera assay in our clinical validations paper um, uh, that was published in JAMA Oncology by Reinhardt and all, we did also correlate or compare CEA and the performance is better. It's better sensitivity and specificity. Uh, specific the specificity is in the 90s, whereas the, the specificity of CEA is in the 60s. And as you can imagine, um, many of you are already familiar that the high false positives that you have with CEA, especially the comorbidities, that can lead to an elevated CEA. So it does outperform CEA with regards to recurrence monitoring. Okay, great. Thank you. Next question. Is this test available to patients outside of the United States? Yes, this test is available internationally. Um, we do have some uh, engagements throughout the world, but um, most commercial utilization is currently unique. Okay, next question. If you had multiple recurrences, what tumor sample should be used, primary or recurrent tumor samples? Either one is fine to use uh, because we're looking at clonal variants. Uh, these clonal variants will be shared by all, uh, sub all clonal uh, lineages that emerge, so they would have common uh, clonal variants in either location. But primary would be great. If not, uh, a, a metastatic site would be fine as well. Okay, we'll ask our audience to uh, ask their last question now. And let's see, so we'll dig into the next one. Can this be ordered for tumor types outside of CRC? Yes, we have clinical validation specifically in CRC, uh, breast cancer, various histological types, um, muscle and lesive bladder cancer, not small cell lung carcinoma. As, uh, as, a, as just to highlight uh, performance, which, which demonstrates consistent uh, performance abilities in identifying high-risk patients that are destined for relapse. Um, but this uh, assay is available for all solid tumor types. Okay, great. Another question on geography. Is it possible to access this test if the patient is in Puerto Rico? Yes. Um, in fact, there is a clinic or, uh, in Puerto Rico that's also participating in a clinical research trial, and they are also have it available commercially. 
Okay, on behalf of the audience, I want to thank our presenters today. At this time, we'll end the webinar, and you may now disconnect.